Hello, ladies. Good morning. All right. It is 8.52 here on the East Coast of the United States. I'm in Virginia. Hello. You know what I decided to start doing, and I got to remind myself to do this with every live, is I want you to please put your name and where you are at, where you're at in the world. <laughs> How about that? Because I love my followers. God knows I do. I need to interact more and I need to make that interaction more personal. So please, please let me know your name. Let me know the city, the state, uh, the country that you're that, where you are in the world. Um, I would so appreciate that. So please put your name and where you're coming from uh, anywhere in the world. That would be helpful. All right. My daughter's coming in to get her devices. Okay. But let's, Danica, good morning. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about self-soothing because the truth is so many people, they need to learn this skill, especially my ladies. My ladies need to learn how to self-soothe. There's plenty of men out there too that need to learn how to self-soothe. Esther from Kenya, amazing. Good morning. All right. Hugh, is it Hugh Gwet? Oh, Hugh Gwet, Miami, Florida. Good morning. All right, but we're going to talk a little bit about self-soothing. I wanted to teach you all this skill, and it is a skill. It is a skill. It's, well, here's what I would say about self-soothing. I believe we were born knowing how to self-soothe, but once we got introduced to people, right? So once our mom came on the scene, our mom birthed us, and, you know, we came out of her womb and then she soothed us and then she introduced us to other people, our dad, our grandmother, our grandfather, our aunts, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters. Like once we got introduced to all these other people, we transferred our ability to self-soothe onto them. And so it's so important that you learn this skill. If you're coming in, please put your name and where you are anywhere in the world. I would love to know that information. But we're going to do a brief lesson on self-soothing this morning because this is a skill that I believe every single person on the planet, <clears throat> they must have in order to be a really conscious human being and in order to uh, be healthy, uh, emotionally healthy, we need to know how to self-soothe. So I was just explaining, my cat is in here, y'all, so don't be surprised if he jumps up, but I was just explaining that I believe this is something we were born with. And as we started to encounter more people, we lost kind of the ability to rely on ourselves to soothe ourselves. But I have seen newborn babies, I have seen one-month-old babies self-soothe. So I believe it's something that's instinctual. It's a part of our evolutionary psychology. But as we become more socialized, we then put that job out on the outside of us. We, we make it that, so that other people need to soothe us instead of us soothing ourselves. So I want to teach this skill this morning, the skill of self-soothing. Okay, good morning, Brittany from Michigan. Good morning. Uh, I've been telling y'all that morning is a better time for me to go live because my makeup is fresh and my mind is fresh. <laughs> I'm not as tired as I am at night, but, you know, sometimes I have to go at night too. I have to do live at night. So self-soothing, what is it? It is the ability to regulate our emotions. It's the ability to self-regulate, right? To really be able to... Breathe, right? Breathing is a super important part of self-soothing and self-regulating. Um, being able to manage our thoughts. That's another huge part of self-soothing and self-regulating. So as a baby, you know, okay, maybe there were no thoughts. There was, you know, you're not here that long. So there was nothing that you were necessarily thinking um, or feeling. But definitely now as an adult, you have had the ability to think and to feel and hopefully connect with those feelings. I'm going to turn on my fan because I'm in my studio and it is it is warm up here. It's supposed to be like 95 today. Um, Jenny from Washington State. Yes, good morning. Good to have you. Thank you. Please let me know in the comments uh, your name, first name, and where you are coming from anywhere in the world. All right. 
Um, okay, she says, do we have to breathe in through nose and out through the mouth for optimal self-soothing? If not, what's the better way? So no, you can breathe in through nose, out through nose. You can breathe in through mouth, out through mouth. But, you know, it's really up to you. For me, I usually start with in through nose, out through nose. And then I may go to in through nose, out through mouth. Um, but I always start with in through nose, out through nose. Because here's the thing I want to tell you about the self-soothing. Sometimes you may have to do it while you're standing in front of someone or sitting in a meeting. Right. There may be other people around and it may look odd if you're going. <sighs> like people are like, OK, what's going on here? <laughs> so you need to understand how to do it in through nose, out through your nose, eyes open. Right. I don't even have to close my eyes to do it. I'm in a meeting. People are getting on my nerves and I'm like. Hmm. You know. Sometimes if I'm alone, I'll breathe in through nose, out through mouth. Sometimes I will make a sound. So we're going to talk about polyvagal nerve. We're going to talk about how important sometimes it is that we make a sound because we are um, conditioning that polyvagal nerve that's in the back of our throat and in our neck and in our sternum. And sound is helpful. It was so interesting to me when I found out about this theory I never quite understood why my humming, so I like to hum, I like to sing, I like to sing, I like to hum, and I never qu quite understood why that was so soothing to me. Why when I was angry or hurt or sad that I would sing or I would hum. And I never knew the science behind that until maybe two years ago when I found out about this polyvagal nerve theory and how the vibrations, the vibrations, the vibrations, or mm, just making noise, that that soothes that polyvagal nerve. I never really understood that. I just knew that for me, making sound, Making sound was very calming to me. Singing, humming, all of those things were very calming. They were very soothing to me. And that's why. So if you're by yourself, I would recommend the breathing. When you breathe out, you make the sound, right? So the ah sound, the oh sound, that can be very helpful. Or om. Om. See, that's where the om. And you. Here's the thing. I want you to try saying that om, and you're gonna feel a vibration in your throat, in the back of your neck. You are soothing that polyvagal nerve. That's super important. Okay, I'm keeping up with your comments. Hello. Good morning. All right. So breathing. I'm an extreme introvert and don't speak much, but I want you to. Manage your thoughts for all of my extreme extroverted people. So I am extrovert. I wouldn't say extreme, but I'm an extrovert, an introverted person, not extroverted. I'm introverted as well. But if for me, it's the managing of my thoughts. So introverts, here's something for you to know. You're in your head all the time. You're in your thoughts all the time. You are ruminating all the time. And so it's your job to manage those thoughts. Manage those thoughts that you're thinking over and over and over. Are they good? Are they positive? Are they helpful? Or are they negative? Are they limiting? Uh, if your thoughts are keeping you in a state of feeling stuck, of not feeling good, then it's your job to manage those thoughts. Did you know that you can think your thoughts on purpose? You don't have to let everything that jumps into your mind stay in your mind. Like, mm -mm. A, a lot of people don't realize that, but... You can think a thought on purpose. She says, how do you manage your thoughts? So you are going to, um, you're, first of all, you need to determine if the thought is true or not. And most of them are not. <laughs> most of them are just things that you're thinking. They're uh, egocentric, right? Your ego is trying to keep you stuck. Your ego is trying to keep you offended. Your ego is taking everything personally. Your ego loves to make up stories. It loves to make up stories, 
right? And once you realize that, I want you to just recognize that's not true. <laughs> like I say that to myself all the time. So the ego comes in with a story and I go, that's not true. That's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. You making that up. See, that's the first response I have to something that I know is ego driven. Oh yeah, girl, they're talking about you. They don't like you. Oh yeah, you too, you too this or that to, to get that guy. You're too, you're too big. You're too small. You're too loud. You're too whatever, right? That's your ego. You can't have him. You're not good enough to be with him. You're not good enough for that job. You're not good enough for that promotion. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough education. All those are ego stories and it loves to keep you stuck. It loves to keep you playing small. And the first thing you need to say is, that's not true. That's a lie. <laughs> I love saying that. I say that all, that's a lie. That's not true. See, you have to be willing to fight those thoughts. You have to be willing to speak back to those thoughts. Okay. She says, I write affirmations and any heart and any hard surface like my mirrors, windows, refrigerator. Great. I love it. I love affirmations. And here's the key. You must write affirmations in the present tense. So it's as if it's already happened. It is easy for me to manage my, you know, food consumption. It's easy for me to manage what I eat every day. I love eating healthy. I love the way my body looks. I love how fit and lean my body is. You know, um, I am lovable. I am always attracting, you know, healthy, emotionally healthy, kind, wealthy, generous men, right? We're saying it as if it's true already. So it can't be a when, if, maybe, no, it has to be right now, I am, that's the power of the words I am, is we are proclaiming and claiming it, I am, okay? Hello from the Netherlands, yes, so we got to manage our thoughts, especially, well, extroverts and introverts, you have to manage your thoughts because the things that you're thinking over and over and over, that's your vibration. That's where you're vibrating from. And you're going to attract things that are a vibrational match for sure. Let me tell you something. This is a quick story about, you know, me and my relationships and dating men who were unfaithful, dating men who were cheaters, right? And having a husband who was unfaithful and was a cheater. When I divorced, I recognized, you know what? I have something to do with this. And this is not about blaming the victim, ladies. We have to be accountable. We have to take personal responsibility here. And we have to be willing to acknowledge, I might have something to do with this. How? I have something to do with this with my thoughts and my expectations, right? If I go into a relationship and I have a belief, ooh, the belief that all men cheat, all men lie, all men fill in the blank. If I roll that thought around my head over and over and over, if I speak it out of my mouth with my girlfriend, sit around, girl, these men are crazy. These men are trash. All men cheat. All men lie. That's the vibration that I'm, I'm on. And guess what's going to come into my life? I can only be with what's a vibrational match. I will attract men who cheat, men who lie, men who are trash. That's why I don't talk like that. Men are not trash. Men are amazing. I'm so glad men exist out here in the world. Men are strong. Men are kind. Men are good. Men are generous. Men are, want to serve me. These are the things that I say over and over and over. And guess what? Those are the men that I attract. So after my divorce, I said, okay, I have something to do with this. I, I figured it out. And I started diving deep into law of attraction, deep into vibration, deep into, a, you know, be, being a co-creator, a manifester. I started diving deep into that, deep into my Bible, which is where all of this comes from. And I was like, what, in Job, in Job, the, the book of Job, that which I thought has come upon me. See, I can't make this up. That which I've continued to think has now come upon me. That's what it says. Because our thoughts are like magnets. And we're thinking and we're speaking over and over and over. And that's our reality. Like we're not going to have beyond what we believe. So if we believe that all men cheat, that's what we're going to have. Because guess what? The way we are designed. We need that to be true so we don't think we're crazy. 
We need that to be true. So you using this in all the bad ways, all the wrong ways. That's what I figured out. I'm, I'm manifesting all the time. I just didn't realize I'm manifesting all the bad stuff. Why don't I use this for good? Why don't I use this for things that I really want? Because I'm manifesting all the time. What I didn't realize was I was manifesting all the bad stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, I can turn this around and actually manifest good men, men who don't cheat, men who don't lie, men who don't run around on me. Huh, let me let me try it and see. And y'all, I kid you not, my ex-husband, that is the last man that I've dated that's cheated on me. That was the last time I was cheated on. That was 19 years ago. <laughs> 19 years ago. And I have never experienced another cheater, another narcissistic man. Nope. Nope. Has not happened because I create that or don't create that. So I had to change that belief that men are X, Y, Z, all these bad things, right? Because that's what I'm going to get. Mm -mm, I'm over that. I'm done with that. And I know this is hard for a lot of people to hear. It really is. This is a hard pill to swallow that I co-created this. I manifested this. Because a lot of us are not even aware. We're not even aware of our, what our predominant thoughts are. We're not even aware of the things we're rolling over in our mind over and over and over. But this is what consciousness is all about. This is what mindfulness is all about. And I've had to work on this. I continue to work on being mindful. And just like in our dating life, it's like when I say, I want you to date intentionally. Be mindful. Why are you accepting every man that comes along? Why are you accepting every man that's interested in you? Just because a man is interested in me, that's called so what? <laughs> like, there are lots of men that are interested in me. And that's called, okay. So, I'm going to run you through a vetting process. I'm going to determine how I feel about you, because that's actually the most important thing. How do I feel about you? That's your place of power. But there are so many women that are just accepting whatever comes along. And whatever comes along ain't great. And I know why a lot of women do this. Because they're lonely. Because they want to be with someone. And they feel like someone is better than no one. But again, you're coming from a place of lack. And that's why you're going to get lack. You're going to get less than because you feel less than. No, I love me. I love my company. I love, you know, dating myself. I love doing things by myself. I have lots of girlfriends. I have lots of guy friends. Like, that's what I don't get. And I'm going to go off here for a second. I had a guy friend tell me that he thinks it's all, all of my male friends that's keeping me single. He's like, I think your male friends are keeping you single. I was like, why? He says, because you're getting a lot of masculine energy. Like you're getting a lot of healthy masculine energy. You're going out, you're having fun. You know, you're like doing things with your girlfriends, your guy friends. And it's, it's almost like all of your relational needs are met. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you may be on to something. I got to think about that. You know, he's like, yeah, all of your relational needs are being met. And I think men who are interested in you can kind of feel that. Like there's no part of you that's like, yeah, I need a man for this, or I need a man for that, or this, or that, or whatever. Okay, he might be on to something, but I digress. Um, but yeah, you should have friends. You should have male friends. You should have female friends. You should have family. You should have people that you're spending time with. And, you know, you shouldn't want to accept everything that comes along. Because there will be a lot of things that come along, but you shouldn't accept it. You shouldn't accept it. You should have standards. So... Personal accountability, yes, and refusing to entertain fallacies. There are no good men, for sure. There are plenty of amazing men out there. Now, here's what I will tell you, and I, I, I don't have any fear in saying this. Um, every good man out there is not for me, and that's okay, right? Every good man out there, I, I have so many great male friends, and yet they are not the best fit for me, and I'm okay with that. I am totally okay with that. And so sometimes people will say, um, you know, you, you know a lot of great guys. I'm surprised you're not choosing one of them or dating one of them. I've already determined that we are not a good fit for each other. So, yeah. But yet, they're great enough to maintain in my life. They're great enough to continue to be friends with. 
All right, Panda Beer says, how do you feel about using weed? So here are my personal thoughts. There is no judgment here, but here are my personal thoughts. Um, I don't engage in anything that doesn't have any positive benefits to my life, my health, my state of mind. Um, some people believe that marijuana has positive benefits for them, right? And some people will say there's medicinal uses of marijuana and other substances that um, alter. So substances that alter your mind state, alter your state of, state of mind in some way. For me personally, it's not something that, you know, I don't ever want to be in an altered state of mind. Like I said, I believe that substances, a lot of people use substances to numb, to self-medicate, to run away from their life. I love my life. Like, I don't ever want to be out of my, 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 my mind. You know, I don't ever want to be out of my current state of mind. I love my life. I love the life that I've created. And I have created my life. So I don't have a use for substances. I don't have a use for marijuana. I don't have a use for alcohol. I don't even drink alcohol. Because why? Like, how would that positively benefit me and my life and my health? That's, that's what I'm on. I only want things in my life that positively benefit me and my life and my health. Excuse me. Okay, I had to get a tissue. <laughs> um, so... That's a that's a personal choice uh, here in the United States. I know you're in the Netherlands, but here in the United States, you know, marijuana is now legal in a lot of states. Good morning. Um, so, again, there's there's no judgment there. You do you. But for me, I, I don't need to numb. I don't need to run away. I don't need to self-medicate. I don't need to forget about bad things that have happened to me. I process through all of that. I'm in a good place. Uh, I. You know, I just, I don't, I don't need that. And if it doesn't have any positive benefit to me, my life, my health, my money, you know, like th that's all I'm interested in. Things that help me in a positive way get to where I'm trying to be. Like that's, that's what I'm on. If it's not doing that, I don't want it. I don't want it. So that's, that's a personal choice that you would have to make for yourself. But I love my life. I love what I got going on. I process through so much trauma that I've had in my life. I'm in a good place. I've done ego work. So I'm good. And I encourage other people to do that too. Like I want you to be present. I want you to be mindful. That's the reason why I've started speaking out more and more about our tech, about our phones, about this metaverse, you know, trying to live in this digital space all the time. No, go outside. Walk around, like go out into the sunlight, walk around in nature, walk on your street, like live in the real world, date men that you meet out in the real world, bump into people, okay, go to events, I have an event tonight, and I'm going casual tonight, y'all, I'm going casual, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm not getting all super gussied up, I'm kind of going casual, but there is a jazz trio at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts tonight. I'll be going to that event, but I'll be going casual because I'll be coming out of a client appointment. And that's where I meet people. That's where I meet people, men and women. Like, go out into the world. That's where your life is. And this whole digital distraction and being on your phone and being on social media all the time, and I'm over it. I'm over it. And I've had to learn how to balance between social media for my business I rarely post on social media for my personal life. People have been telling me that more and more. Oh, you haven't posted on your personal account in ages because I'm living. I'm out in the world living. So I encourage people to do the same. All right. Back to the self-soothing because I done got clear off track. All right. Breathing. That's important to your self-soothing. I want you to choose things that make you feel good. What's a good example of that? So here's what I tell people. You're going to use your five senses. That is how you take in the world. Sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. That's how you make sense of the world, right? And so sight, what are things that make you feel good when you look at them? 
So for me, it is pictures of French bulldogs. It is puppy and baby videos, videos of babies laughing. Um, it is sunrises. It is sunsets. It is waves on the beach. It is pictures of beautiful, handsome men. <laughs> um, it is... What else? When I see it, I love uh, funny movies and I love watching stand-up comedy. Um, yeah, there's so many amazing things that when I see it, my, my, my uh, plant babies, when I see my plant babies come up, that makes me feel good. When I'm watching the animals outside, that makes me feel good. You know, so what are the things that when you look at them, they make you feel good? Write those things down. Reach for those things. Sound. What sounds make you feel good? So I love music. Everyone knows that. I love uh, many different forms of music. I love the sound of the rain. I love thunderstorms. I love the sound of babies laughing. Um, what else? I love sounds of nature, like the birds and all of that. I love that. I love the waves at the beach. So we did sight. We did sound. Taste. What are some of your favorite foods and drinks? So I love a really good cup of coffee. Mm, I love a good cup of coffee with almond milk. Oh, my favorite. Um, I love uh, fresh baked bread. I love hot chocolate chip cookies. Those are my favorite. Um, what else? I love pizza. I think pizza is like the perfect food. It has all of the things that I love in it. Cheese, sauce, bread, vegetables, meat. Everything I love is in pizza. So pizza is like one of my favorite foods, especially a really good thick crust deep dish pizza. So we did, let's see, sight, sound, taste, touch. So touch is what touches you and what you touch. So me petting my cat, me hugging my children or hugging my friends or my family, um, <clears throat> me getting a hot shower or a hot bath, that's considered touch. I have uh, my fuzzy pants, my fuzzy socks. I have my blanket. Ooh, my massage chair. <clears throat> my massage chair, that's one of my favorite touch things that makes me feel good. I love sitting in my massage chair. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Uh, and I love getting massages, okay? The last one is smell. What smells, when you smell them, make you feel good. So my favorite smell in the whole world, you all, is fresh cut lemons. I, oh, I have fresh cut lemons every day. I cut a lemon. I cut a lime. I just soak in the smell. I don't know what it is about that smell, but it makes me feel amazing. I s smell it, and then I squeeze it in my water. So I do that every single morning. One fresh cut lemon, one fresh cut lime. I smell it, squeeze it in my water. I'm good to go for the day. So those are some of my favorite things when I think about the five senses, right? Sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. I want you to make a list of your favorite things. And these are the things that you're going to reach for. These are the things that are going to help soothe you when you're upset, when you're feeling bad. I don't want all of those things to be food because some people have been saying, oh, you know, that's my weakness is... I keep reaching for my favorite food when I feel bad, and that's contributing to a whole host of other problems. So it can't just be food. You have four other senses. I want you to use those four other senses and pick things out of them that make you feel good, okay, that are not going to add extra calories to you. Uh, she says, how do you protect your energy when with other people? So again, the ego work is super important. You have to learn how to detach, right? We are built to bond. We are built to attach to people. But you also have to learn how you, to healthy, have healthy detachment. You have to learn how to detach yourself in a healthy way. Okay? So that looks like my ego recognizes that what this person is saying, what this person is doing, it has nothing to do with me. It's not about me. It's about them. But see, when you don't do your ego work, you make things that people are saying and doing, you make it about you, and it's not. Like, the whole time that someone's sitting there giving me their unwarranted and unsolicited opinion, guess what I'm thinking? This is not about me. <laughs> like, this is not about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not about me. Oh, that's not about me. This is not about me. That's what I'm thinking. And I believe it. It's about you. You're giving this advice because it's what you would do. It's what you want or don't want. It's not about me. And sometimes you have to repeat that to yourself over and over and over. This is not about me. This is about that other person. This is a big part of doing the ego work. 
But I also want you to consider not um, being around people that aren't positive, that aren't giving you anything of benefit. Like, again, as I stated in the beginning, you are the creator of your life. One of the things that drives me absolutely crazy when I'm in counseling sessions or even in coaching sessions is people believe that other people are doing things to them. Everyone's doing something to me. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're doing them. They're just doing what they do. And you as the creator of your life, you get to determine how you feel about it. You get to determine if you participate. You get to determine if you stay around. That's it. You have to take your power back. And power is personal responsibility. When you take personal responsibility, you're taking your power back. You're saying, I get to choose whether I participate or not. I get to choose whether I take it in or not. I get to choose whether I listen or not. I get to choose whether I make it about me or not. You have the power to not make it about you. I do this all the time. This isn't about me. This is about you. This isn't about me. So, mm -mm. Mm -mm, but you have to do some ego work in order to really be in that space where you can feel good about that. But a big part of your self-soothing is you have to do the ego work. You have to recognize whatever's happening in this moment, it's not all about me. It's not personal and it's not all about me. But our egos, our egos like to make it about us. Our egos love to make up stories. It loves to tell these stories about how people are treating us and how they really feel about us and what this means. And like, we love doing that. And I just don't do that anymore. I'm like, mm -mm. I take more things at face value. I don't make it about me. I don't take it personal. I'm like, mm, it's not about me. That's it. Self-soothing also means that we are going to make a conscious effort, right? So we're going to mind our thoughts. We're going to make sure that we are... Um, keeping track of our thoughts and if those thoughts are negative, if they're not pushing us to greatness, if they're not helping us to be better, we're going to trash those thoughts and we're going to think good thoughts on purpose. You can do that. Um, what's another good way to learn how to self-soothe or self-regulate? You can take space from people. And I don't understand why more people don't do this. Like, I really don't understand how people stick around and let people talk to them any kind of way do them any kind of way, talk, you know, just yell, scream, uh, just do them any kind of way. Like, I just don't get it. Like, I'm not sticking around. I'm not staying in a room with someone who's screaming or yelling or talking to me any kind of way. I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm not sticking around for it. So I, I just don't understand that. Like, you can control yourself. You can leave that situation. You can hang up that phone. And I have. I'm like, hey, got to get going. All right, bye. See? And, and now peace has been restored. I don't understand why people don't do that more. Like you have the power to restore peace in you. I have the power to not let things in. I have the power to not take things personal. I have the power to walk away. And But again, it's the ego that's keeping us stuck there. The ego is telling us, nope, you got to stay right here. You got to fight. You got to stick up for yourself. And there will be times when you have to do that. But there are plenty of times where you're like, I don't have to put up with this. <laughs> like, that's, that's the first thing I'm thinking. When someone's talking crazy, when someone's doing something crazy, I'm like, I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to sit around. I don't have to stay around for this. <laughs> like, that's, the, that's the first place my mind goes. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to stick around for this mistreatment. And I'm not talking about the situations where you're at work, you can't get up and walk out of the meeting or, you know, that's when the self-soothing is going to come in. But there are times where part of the self-soothing is get going, leave, go about your business and be like, I don't need to listen to this. <laughs> like, I'm good. I'm, we straight. I got to go. And, and you do that. That's, that's empowering you that you don't have to allow people to mistreat you that's it okay i hope these tips were helpful um there are so 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 much more i'd love to be your coach i'd love to work with you if you feel like emotional regulation or dysregulation or uh self-soothing is a struggle for you um managing your thoughts all of those things i'd love to be your coach 
I work with women, of course, on their dating and relationship life, but I also work with women on building their self-esteem and their confidence. I also work with women on learning how to regulate themselves emotionally. Um, I work with women on law of attraction. I mean, there are just so many things that we need so we can be our best self. So there's so many topics that I can help you with. If you want to set up a coaching session, please DM me, send me a DM, or you can go to my website, www.betterlovemovement.com, click on the services tab, and you will see all the services there that I have. But yes, I believe that we are in the greatest time ever. We're in a time right now where there is education, there's knowledge like coming out of our ears, and we need to take advantage of it. We need to learn these skills and these tools so we can become better people. I think that's why we're in the situation we're in with the relationship stuff is people are, they need to learn. They need to learn some skills and some tools and they need to start applying things. So, 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 so much. Okay, she says, this is just what happened to me last week. Okay, great. I'm glad that it was helpful. Yes, and I want to catch women younger. That has always been my goal to work with 20-something-year-olds and 30-something-year-olds. I want to work with women younger. I want you to have the life of your dreams, and I want you to have it younger. I have the life of my dreams, but I'm 54. So, um, And I still haven't met my husband yet, y'all. My life is going to get even better. My life is getting better and better and better. I still haven't even hit my top five goals. Life is only going to get better for me. But it's pretty great now. And again, I want women to experience this younger. Like it makes me sad that women in their 20s and their 30s are miserable. I'm like, what? What? I want you to have happiness and health and joy and love and everything you want. And I want you to have it younger. I don't want you to wait until you're in your 50s or your 60s. I want you to have it in your 20s and your 30s. Okay, so please feel free to check out the website, check out the books. Um, I'm actually getting ready to put both of my audio books on my website. So if you are interested in checking out the book, but you want the audio version, uh, that's going to be coming soon in the next month. And until then, you can go head over to Amazon and check out the books or click the link in my bio. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, ladies. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And as always, stay open to love.